I'm going to do one more example with trig substitutions. This time it's an application. So we saw before, we want to compute the arc length between two points on the graph of a function. We can do that with a certain definite integral, which is square root of 1 plus the derivative of the function squared. In this case, I want to look at y equals x squared, that function, from over the interval from 0 to 3, which connects these two points. Seems like a pretty simple problem, but it leads to this definite integral, the square root of 1 plus 4x squared. Okay, now notice again, this is a, a integral involving a square root. In this case, it's a sum of two things. We can write each term as a perfect square. One is one is 1 squared, 4x squared is 2x quantity squared. So we can view this as the 1 and the 2x as two sides of a right angle triangle. It's going to be simplest for us to put the 2x as the height, 1 on the base, because then the trig function that connects theta, 2x, and 1 together is tangent. If we did it the other way around, it would be cotangent. So that's just done for simplicity. Okay, now reading off the figure, you can see that tangent of theta is 2x over 1, which is just 2x. So, if we want to solve for x, we can multiply both sides of that relationship by half or divide by 2. So tangent theta is 2x. To isolate x, we get x is 1 half tangent theta. And that is our relationship between x and theta. That's our declaration of x as a function of a different variable, in this case, theta. Then we take the derivative, we get 1 half dx is equal to 1 half secant squared. Now, looking up at our integrand, it's involving the square root, which happens to come off our hypotenuse here. So, for us, we could substitute in x to be 1 half tangent theta inside there and then use trig identities, or we can read off from the triangle, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, so secant theta is the square root of um, 1 plus 4x squared. Now, we got a definite integral, so we're going to change the limits over. If we let x equal 0 off our integrand, if x is 0, then that's going to say from this relationship that 1 half tangent theta is 0, or just that tangent is 0. In this case, that gives us theta is 0. Okay, if x is equal 3, then 1 half tangent theta has got to be 3, so tangent theta has got to be 6. Now we've got to solve that for theta, and we can only do that by taking the inverse tangent of each side. So the best we can do here is that theta is the inverse tangent of 6. Okay, so now we're going to substitute, make all these changes in our integral. All right. So starting out with our original integral, we're gonna, the square root is going to be replaced by secant dx is going to re be replaced by secant 1 half secant squared d theta. The limits are going to go from now 0 up to the inverse tangent of 6. And then we got to try to integrate this, fun this function of theta. Okay, now this one's not going to be too much fun. You can see we have a 1 half we can pull out, but we're stuck integrating secant cubed. All right, now we've done this in class already. We saw we could not avoid integration by parts, but we're not going to go through all of that mess again. We had a formula. You can look it up in the textbook. We know how to do it, so let's just apply the result. The antiderivative of secant cubed is 1 half times secant theta tangent theta plus 1 half times the natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta all inside the logarithm. Okay, so that is all times 1 half on the outside, so that's the antiderivative, and then we're going to have to evaluate that from 0 to the inverse tangent of 6. Okay, so next we just need to plug the top number, top limit of integration, plug the bottom limit of integration in, and subtract. This is going to be a little bit messy, but we're going to see that we're going to eventually get it down to a reasonable looking number. Okay, so wherever we see theta, we're going to first put in inverse tangent of 6, inverse tangent of 6, wherever we see theta. Alright, so we got secant of the inverse tangent of 6, tangent of the inverse tangent of 6, plus, and then half times the half gives us another quarter times the natural log. Now we're again, we're replacing 
theta by arctangent of 6. It takes longer to write it out, certainly, than it does to say it. And then we're going to do some same thing with a lower limit. We're going to replace theta by 0 in these four places, and then subtract those two. Okay. Now, looking ahead to what's going to happen here, plugging in 0 is not going to be too bad. Secant of 0, that's 1 over cosine. That's going to be 1. Tangent of 0, however, is 0. So this term is going to completely cancel out. Okay. For the logarithm, secant of 0 is 1. Tangent of 0 is 0. So we're going to get 0 plus 1 inside. So this is going to leave us with the natural log of 1, which is 0. So the whole second large term completely cancels out. Okay. Up in the first couple of terms where we inputted the inverse tangent of 6, the tangent and the inverse tangent are going to undo each other. That's going to leave us with 6. This is going to leave us with 6. Our main work left to do is to somehow get a better looking expression for secant of the inverse tangent of 6. All right, but what are we looking at now after we've reduced it all? We've got 1 fourth times secant of the inverse tangent of 6 times 6 plus a quarter times the natural log of secant of the inverse tangent of 6 plus 6 inside the absolute value. Okay, well, we're going to see that we don't need the absolute value shortly. That this number we're adding up on the inside is positive. But what to do with this? All right, so we've seen this already in the, the previous video. You've got secant acting on the inverse tangent. The inverse tangent is an angle. The inverse tangent of 6 is some angle. Let's call it beta. Okay, now if beta is equal to the inverse tangent of 6, then that's going to tell us that tangent of beta equals 6. Or we can rewrite that as 6 over 1. Now, let's go up and label the figure. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so you can put the 6 on the opposite side, the 1 on the adjacent side. By the Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse has to be the square root of 37. And therefore, reading off from the triangle, secant of beta is hypotenuse over adjacent, you get the square root of 37. So that means that secant of the inverse tangent of 6 is really just not so bad. It's a square root of 37. So up in our integral, after all of that, we get 1 fourth times the square root of 37 times 6 plus the natural log of a quarter times the natural log of the square root of 37 plus 6. Definitely a non-trivial answer for that arc length. Okay, it seems like a very easy problem, but to the contrary, it's quite difficult to come up with that arc, exact arc length. Just simplifying it out, cancel a factor of 2 into the 4 into 6. Can't do much more with, with the natural log. We're just going to have to leave it as that there's no properties we can use to break that down.